Hi everybody and welcome back to Ljubljana Talks. This is live edition and hybrid uh, version of our Ljubljana Talks, live from the biggest and the most important trade show of our industry, IMAX Frankfurt 2023. I have two amazing guests uh, this morning with me, Karina Bauer, CEO of IMAX Group, and Petra Stušek, CEO of Ljubljana Tourism, and also the uh, president of the board of City DNA. Uh, in uh, a company of such a beautiful ladies, we will definitely talk about the challenges of our industry, about the future of our industry, and of course about IMAX. Congratulations on a great show. Thank it was amazing, much. three days. This is the grand finale and we will close this, uh, this uh, show with a grand finale, Ljubljana Talks. But let me ask you something, uh, Karina. What do you expect from destinations coming to, to your show? Uh, well, you know, when we are working uh, with the destinations around the world to come to the show, we see it as a partnership because um, we work with the destinations, the hotel groups, year after year for both of the shows. And so um, for us, we um, just expect and hope that we can work with all the destinations in that way, with that long-term view. We need the destinations to come here, to invest in the show, to make it look beautiful. I mean, it's the destinations and the hotels that are building the stands and doing that. And then we have a responsibility to make sure that that's a good return, that they get the good return on their investment by bringing the buyers here and, and making sure that they can um, meet the buyers in a good, good way and have appointments and and uh, drive that business. So it is really a partnership and we need we need to work hard for the destinations and the destinations need to work hard as well to get the most from the show. So that's really, uh, it has to work both ways, I think. So Peter, what do you expect from a great show like IMAX? Uh, first of all, good morning <laughs> to everyone. Um, actually, in a nutshell, to be inspired. Literally, because it's the biggest show actually in the world and it sets trends. It doesn't only bring them to us, it actually enables us to co-create them. So this is the place to be definitely uh, every May, every year. And uh, it's, uh, it's also not so self-explanatory that CVBs can meet among ourselves. So we can actually also exchange good practices, what we are doing on and, and, and again, um, uh, uh, inspire each other. Uh, so apart from, of course, telling what we were doing on all year long uh, and obviously uh, making real business. Uh, this is in a nutshell, like really being to be inspired. Uh, Karina, trade shows like yours creates huge multiplier efforts. How can you comment this? What does it mean this trade show to the, to the Frankfurt, to the global meetings industry? Maybe you can also share some data about this year's show so that we have some ideas. Uh, what is going on here actually? So. Yeah, so we actually, um, you know, we've done a rebrand here this year and we also have launched a new purpose and vision and mission. And our purpose is to build human connections all across the world and so I think that goes as well to what you said Petra and also your question about what it means and the multiplier effects because not just IMEX but all events that take place are about building those human connections and as you said um, you come here, you need to drive the business, but you can also be inspired and share a lot with your peers, with the other CVBs around the world. And so that's, I think, where the multiplier effect becomes so important, having that opportunity to bring everybody in one place at one time. It's not just about the direct economic impact on the city of Frankfurt and of, on, in Germany, but it's also about the multiplier effect for every single person um, that's here. So we talk about that and we utilize that, that phrase, in fact, internally quite a lot. It's, uh, I call it an outsized impact, really. You know, you have your direct and then you have all these other e effects. In terms of the basic numbers, um, we're expecting that we'll have had somewhere between 12 and 13,000 people mm -hmm. come to the show from about 100 different countries. Um, there are about 300 stands on the show floor and um, just under three thousand exhibiting companies on those stands 
And then we expect somewhere close to 4,000 buyers will have been here. About 3,100-ish will be hosted mm -hmm. and the rest um, are visitor buyers. So that means they're um, high quality buyers. We qualify them so that they can make appointments, but we're not um, hosting their travel and accommodation. So we don't have obviously as much control over the schedule and the time they spend here. Um, so that's uh, the rough numbers. Um, in terms of the um, economic impacts, um, we've just started to measure with our uh, research partners, Explory, uh, both economic and sustainability impacts from the show. And uh, last year was the first year we started to do that, where we actually asked exhibitors and buyers um, in the post-show survey uh, where they came from, where they stayed, how they traveled, and also whether they have been to Frankfurt before, whether they're more likely to come back as a result of their visit, etc. So we're trying to get a um, some a baseline really to see um, whether we can have that data to showcase some of the economic impact on the city of Frankfurt, on Germany, and propensity to uh, come back as a result um, of the show. And I think that's important for any event actually to try to work out what questions are valuable because we all need that to advocate for our industry as well. True. Goras, can I ask one question? Because <laughs> I, I really wonder, I mean, I admire the, 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 the like I said, the trends that you're sending, you have uh, the uh, last year you, for example, introduced the workshops on, on uh, well-being, even mental health. Um, and, and you have for over a decade already the well-being corner that you can actually hide when it's a little bit too much of everything uh, and get your sense back uh, together, which is amazing. So it's obviously that you are uh, for over uh, quite a lot of, uh, I mean, for quite a lot of time already an innovator. And this year's innovation, would you, could you, I don't know, bring out few <laughs> yeah absolutely yes yeah. so as you say we really like to do that that's the sort of the um people would maybe call it the softer side of the show but we think it's really integral we're doing more and more work uh, within the team to look at the design of the show and really um purposefully design the event whether that's the education or this year we focused a lot on accessibility so really looking at every aspect of the show from the point of view of maybe a wheelchair user or somebody who has a neurodiversity and needs maybe some calming spaces. We did bring again in some trained psychologists. They've been doing the listening lab so people could book in for a 30-minute uh, session with them, really understand what it is to be listened to and, and be coached. Wow. Um, and they were doing educational sessions as well. Um, and we've been working as well with Google. So Google have started a project called XI and that really is looking at um, the design of events from a neurodiverse perspective and how you create events with a sense of belonging. So they've been doing workshops all week in the People and Planet Village. And the workshops, it, it's pretty cool because they do run them in the same way as workshops are run internally as go at Google, very fast paced. So you get um, a, a little experience, a Google experience, but um, we'll take all of that learning and see how we can uh, put that out into the industry. But we we're working with them very much on the intentional design of the show. And even the rebrand, we looked at the colors to make sure that they were more accessible um, online for people with a visual impairment. So there's still plenty of work to do around that, but we've really focused on that. Even little things like we published uh, in advance of the show, the menus at all the food outlets. So if you have um, uh, different needs in terms of your diet, you would know um, where to go before you came. So we're just uh, trying to be very uh, intentional and focused to make sure that everybody feels included and welcomed when they come to a show like this. Our industry is quite uh, extroverted, yeah. shall we say, mm -hmm. um, on the surface, um, but we want to make sure that everybody um, who can take part is, is feels really comfortable here. Yeah, even even last night the gala, so many people, but it was really pointed out in a amazing way that everyone heard that the the food was really locally sourced. So it's not only about us uh, doing business the proper way, the regenerative, the organic way, 
but it's also about teaching how to do it. Yes, and that's the role we feel um, we have a responsibility and a role to play because we're gathering the whole industry together. We can both uh, talk about what we're doing and also showcase it. And we feel that if we can showcase some of those things in a big environment, in a big event like this, then other people can hopefully look at it and pick what they can do in their own events as well. Well, I can say that all three of us are big advocates of, of sustainability. All on uh, each of us on, on different fields so this is definitely not just a buzzword this is what I feel from what you are doing Petra is now uh, uh, taking this path for a long time with Ljubljana this is now a kind of new phase for you uh, so-called regenerative phase of Ljubljana tourism maybe we can start also with that because this is a kind of topic we are uh, circling around a lot so maybe Petra what does it regeneration means to you and can you explain this concept in, in, in line with what organizers are doing actually? Well, it's actually not a new thing. It's something that we're just putting it in a systematic approach uh, in general, not only in Ljubljana, but uh, uh, all the conscious destinations and there are more and more of us, which is a great news for planet. But to um, actually put it in a most, let's say, how do I say plastic, not in a plastic sense of meaning, a way, <laughs> is um, um, to make the place better than it was before the visitors came to, you know, sustainability, it, it was it was kind of dif difficult to wrap uh, what exactly sustainability is, let alone now regeneration, a regenerative approach or regeneration. However, we're talking about not only making less damage, what sustainability was about, but uh, to bring good, to make good and to make places better than uh, before the uh, visitors actually came to the destination. By visitors, we mean also us locals who are visitors in our destinations, you know? So, um, it, uh, regenerative approach is basically that we contribute to the better of our uh, quality of living. It, it sounds philosophical, but it's actually about, I don't know, helping craftsmen to survive and through their teaching, be locals and visitors about your, um, your, your heritage uh, and enabling them to, I don't know, repair something with them or to make something as a souvenir or even to, 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 for a gift uh, for someone else. Um, it, it is about um, going to the farm, for example, and help the uh, uh, whoever owns it uh, to uh, um, on, on, on a field to grow things. Uh, it's about living, making an impact and leaving a legacy there. This is a well to your yeah. story, the sustainable story of Hamas. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it is. And the um, that idea of, as you say, doing less bad uh, and focusing on the good and the legacy, I think that's really uh, important. That's something is very hard to achieve, but also it's possible to achieve. You see it with some of the association conventions, the medical conventions in particular exactly. that go into destinations and they leave a legacy of maybe better awareness for your heart health or respiratory issues or um, some of the the um, events that go into cities, they actually are um, now putting in uh, d during the weeks that they're building up and that they're there in the city making uh, maybe mobile uh, medical um, uh, tents or stations where people can go and have their heart checked or whatever it is. So I think those kind of things, raising awareness for issues, whatever those issues might be, um, is a really nice way to yeah. do it. Here at IMEX, we... Um, do things like we'll be collecting all the plants from the show floor and then sending them to nursing homes um, in in the um, local area. All the carpet will be taken. It's actually made into um, shoe things like shoe boxes, or it's used for power, for electricity, yeah. for the region, for the area that we're in. So all these things. And um, what I would say is they take thought, mm -hmm. they take intentional design. Uh, but we're now at a stage where this is possible, and where there are um, people in 
most destinations who can help to do that. And I think that's really positive. So for event designers and planners and, and especially for destinations as well to help event planners when they're coming in to really help them leave that legacy. Because if you're organizing an event in multiple different destinations, you don't know it as well. And so I think that's where the suppliers and the destinations can play a really valuable role. That's right. Do you remember that now over a decade, I think it was 2012, that we in Ljubljana had the Amex Challenge? Yes. It, it was actually the real CSR program, but with the legacy that we still talk about and it's still alive. It's so, almost 15 years. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> so it's a dare for the two of you. Can we do something together, like really soon again? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. The Beehive is active there, you know, yes, and it helps exactly. to, to so many children. Exactly. That yeah. was an amazing project. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I heard uh, from, the, from the people from, from the institution there, it's, it's amazing. Pro it was an amazing project. Yes, it's and still as you amazing say, project. it's still there because when you create something like that, it lives on if you do it with the right partners. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I agree. That type of project um, is more, more than the sum of its parts. It's a multiplier effect. That's, exactly. that's exactly what it is. Well, the pandemic, pandemic seems like a distant memory, so we forgot about it, so uh, we do not talk about that anymore. But what we learned, what was positive about it and what was negative? What can you say, both of you, about the pandemic times? Did we learn something out of it? I hope so. Um, I, I, I'm happy to go first. I think, um, you know, one of the things we learned, our corporate clients learned, everybody learned, is that you cannot replace face-to-face -face human yeah. interactions. Right. And that's very good for um, the human race and it's good for our industry as well. Um, we really need to bring people together. And um, we see now in this world of remote and hybrid work that uh, companies even more need to bring their teams together um, and so that's as well then is on us as an industry to really help those clients to intentionally design yeah. those events to get the most out of them um, so I think I think the world really really learned that I think for us as a business we had obviously the opportunity to have a very steep learning curve in terms of tech yeah. and digital transformation and that is impacting us now as we come out of the pandemic to really understand how we can give um, better um, data, better information and serve our clients even better uh, above and beyond the physical show that yeah. we produce. Um, and it gave us time as well to really uh, to go deep into things like the intentional event design, uh, neurodiversity, all of those things and understand the importance of them. Yeah, actually the pandemic, uh, uh, ta uh, the, the biggest uh, outcome in my opinion is the actual power of the resilience on so many levels on so many levels and um, the the it it, it it woke us up in in the proper way so we are now really more into taking care of first of course ourselves because it comes out of uh, our personal needs and that reflects in personalized but also in business which is the best possible news and of course about the planet too so it's it's kind of it's a glo it became a global thing not only f a few continents thing like it used to be you know so there are, I mean, many, a majority of it is negative, that the, the world shut down. But it, if, you, if we as a human race learn the lesson, then, then, then thank God it's over. But, and it's also a good thing that it happened from this only perspective. Yeah, I, I agree with that, just to say in terms of resilience, but also adaptability. Yeah. I think we learned um, personally and as an industry that we can adapt, that we um, can work fast, that we um, can be super creative as well. And I think that gives us confidence then going into the future. I can see that we are all optimists here, so yeah, this is yeah, great. I love that. So <laughs> that's important in life, I yeah, think so. Optimism drives the world. Uh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> well, what will uh, IMAX look like in 2030? <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, I get asked this question. I do truly believe that um, it won't look 
completely different. I think, you know, trade shows are do, are, have been alive for a thousand years because they're marketplaces. We bring people together to be inspired, to do business, to make those human connections. So that in itself, I, that's a fundamental yeah. that doesn't change. But who knows what are the key issues that we'll be talking about that we need to really drive. You know, right now it's about things like neurodiversity, mm -hmm. mental health. So we can't predict what the future will be. I think it's about staying adaptable, staying really open um, and helping uh, and making sure that we're always, what, what we aim to do is bring those trends yeah. to the industry yeah. maybe two or three years before they're mainstream so that people can start really uh, getting them in their minds, seeding them and understanding what it might mean to them. So I don't know exactly, um, but I do strongly believe that ultimately a marketplace is a marketplace to bring people together successfully and that fundamental core doesn't change. Well, uh, the hot topic, uh, the buzzword of these two days of Ljubljana talks was, of course, AI. Uh, yes. We couldn't escape that, so we, we talked about that with all the speakers and all the guests. So may, what is your comment about that? So uh, do you see us, uh, uh, AI as a threat or as a tool, as an opportunity? So uh, shortly, of course, because we can talk for hours about that, I think so. Yeah. Well, uh, um, definitely as a um, opportunity and as a tool, it's, it, it, it gives us really great tool in addition to people's skills because people's skills will never be replaced. I, uh, but I mean, all of us know that AI actually is uh, the fastest learner in the world and nothing can top up that. But if, uh, uh, if or uh, yeah, if we channel it in a proper way and it looks like we are aware of the threats that can uh, that can come out of it, then it's it's a great helper. For, I don't know. For example, in the destination, uh, on the reception of the hotel or at the tourist information center, the standard questions that are asked over and over again can be answered by AI and the actual person can go deeper with the person and it goes very well uh, together with the trends that you, that you are setting here at IMEX, that we are setting at the destination. We're talking about the uh, concierges of the destinations or of the meetings um, uh, people-wise, whereas uh, um, all the, 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 the more on the surface things AI can take over. So it could be a great combination. I mean, and in my personal opinion, if you do it properly, um, AI brings out the transparency in general. We're afraid of it because it's actually more transparent than anything before. We, we would, I mean, uh, we, were, we would be afraid of technology even in the past if we would be aware what it brings, you know? So deeper understanding, deeper knowledge, it, uh, of course we're afraid of the unknown, but less and less because it becomes known. And we're starting to use it in our own benefit. Well, as an optimist, of course, I see the opportunity as well. Um, I think, you know, everything that we've seen over the past 20 years, tech has changed so fast and we always look at new things coming down the line and say, how will this impact the industry? Is this mean the end of face-to-face -face events? Um, so, and what we see exactly as you said, is every um, time tech improves and changes, we and it enables us to make the face-to-face -face interactions much more effective. So for us, we look at AI as, as well as a tool. How can we make this event better using that as a tool? How can we reduce um, some of the administrative tasks so that our team has more time to be on the phone or traveling and seeing our clients and making sure that we understand their needs and can deliver them um, to the best of our ability. So I see AI as that opportunity for better automation, better administrative tasks and using our human beings for what they're good at, which is the relationships and, and the real thinking um, and the real optimization. So that's that's what excites me. And I also think that it can um, take some of the chance away from some of the human interactions where we can really um, put people together in a cleverer way and, and make sure that if you have a specific interest when you're coming to the show, you can really navigate 
navigate all the things that are going on here much more intelligently and quicker. So that's where I see a real opportunity. Um, and of course, as you say, there are scary things in the news about how AI can be utilized. But for us as an industry, I think there can be some really great benefits. Again, we are optimists. I love We're, that. Totally. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> but what uh, do you know today that you wish you had known when you started working in this industry? This is a question for both of you. That is a difficult one. That is. I don't know. I kind of personally think it's not a good thing if you're the wiser, <laughs> the, the wise guy, like knowing everything. So it's a good thing the, uh, that we were enabled the, appro the approach bottom up. So, you know, uh, so we were taught by the seniors with a, a, a lot of knowledge back then. But uh, it also, at least to me personally, it gave me also the strength and the power, um, and uh, to 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 then in, in the further process to co-create some things in the in the industry. So, actually, nothing. Yeah, I, it's interesting actually that idea of sort of working from the bottom up and learning the job. I think that's a. Re I, I agree. That's all, also what I did, and um, I think there's a real value in that. And sometimes there's a value in not knowing too much because it's scary when you know too much. I, I think about the first show I did in 2003. I had no idea what was going on, and that was definitely the best thing at the time. But I think if I um, if there was anything sort of um, that I would have, I guess, liked to know. It's just maybe the fact that um, people in this industry, they don't expect perfection. Mm. They expect top quality intention. They expect you to do your best. They expect you to really um, focus on um, that customer service. Um, but actually, this industry is hugely adaptable and human centric and relationship focused and and um, I learned that very very fast of course um, but I think that's nice it may be not what I wanted to know but it's nice for people to know that coming in I think it's a way for us to attract new talent because this is a really special industry and to be able to articulate why it's so different for our, from other industries you know we were talking and I said that uh, last night the you know deputy mayor of London um, was at the awards and said to me oh this is amazing this is like a family here mm -hmm. and that's what the industry yes. is and so being able to articulate that to attract talent I think is really valuable yeah. yeah maybe one more question is our industry cool enough to attract young talents because we are now becoming more and more a high-tech industry not logistics anymore it's about you know a lot of digital knowledge and so on so are we cool enough for Z generation, <laughs> what do you think? Well, even, I mean, because of that, I think we're cool for the, for the uh, young generation. But in general, we are very cool on so many levels. And it's not just a PR talk or something, because I'm personally passionate, passionate about, but it's, uh, uh, it, it's because it's so, um, uh, how do you call it, multi, um, um, multi-connected and it brings results on, on different levels, uh, leaves impact, I mean, gives you opportunity for you personally to leave impact. So the only thing left is on us, you know, the senior generations to make the cool story for youngers so they would see the value for them uh, right away it's like i was like like i said before it's like i was taught uh, on my uh, in my beginnings uh, by them it's the same our job now so definitely cool industry just the story needs to be even more cool yeah, I, I agree with that as well. We're not great at telling our story, yeah. but I think, as you say, there are so many multifaceted areas. You know, you can be in this industry and be in tech. You can be in this industry and be on stage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I so and I think it's just um, helping people to understand all of those different areas and equate some of the events that they might have in their mind, which are maybe more consumer events, and show how that actually equates 
dates and is still relevant in the business context. More and more business events, consumer events, mm -hmm. we're all one person. It doesn't really make sense anymore to, to have that distinction. Yeah. And so, I, yeah, I think we are cool enough, but we need to tell our story much better. One thing I would say is, you know, the IMEX team, we have uh, nearly 80 people. We have people of every decade, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, with mm -hmm. us. And, you know, I see some of our newbies that are here for the first time. They've been working in the office maybe almost a year mm -hmm. and they haven't come to a show awesome. yet. And I see them come in here on Monday or Tuesday morning when the show's built up and their eyes, yes. you know, are like, yes. wow, this is amazing. And and one of them said to, to me, um, He's been, he's in our tech team, he's working uh, on data and things like that. And he said, oh, I've been working on the data for six months and now I, it, now it's people. Yeah. And so that is what's cool. It's that human connection and, and kids now are online all the time and they need the human connection and they want it. Um, and I saw all of those 20 year olds on the dance floor last night and having the time of their lives. And so, you know, the fact that we can give that to people, you work hard, yes, you do all these things, but when you're on an event, that is an amazing feeling. And to, to be able to have both facets, I think is really valuable. So we just need to tell that story or demonstrate that story uh, better. Yeah, definitely. Because the, the kids nowadays are um, all about, they wanted to contribute to leave their imprint already. So this is also a good news that they're so eager to do that already uh, as young, in their young um, uh, years. So it's uh, it, it, it's a great combination of everyone. So to change the management techniques a little bit. So if you manage people with the techniques from the 19th century, then of course it simply doesn't work. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm joking a little bit, but we are coming to the end of this Lugana Talks. Uh, Lugana Talk, and they have short questions for you uh, and you can elaborate a little bit uh, your answers uh, first one is for you for Karina uh, Instagram or TikTok Instagram <laughs> can you explain why uh, I I set up a TikTok account in the pandemic and I've never used it so I definitely can't say TikTok because I have no idea how it works <laughs> but it's funny I can tell you but that it's very funny my kids are on TikTok so um, yeah one day I'll get there <laughs> Petra, backstage or front stage? That's a tough one. Whew. Uh, well, obviously a front stage, <laughs> but the backstage is really appealing because that's where the actual uh, managing flows are happening and and and, and the uh, setting up. So the, the framing things, the, actually the backstage is the, the key one, but the exciting one is the front one. <laughs> uh, uh, sustainable question, train or car? My electric car. <laughs> <laughs> it depends where I'm going. I do love a train journey as well, but no, I've got a fabulous electric car. I love it. Super. Walking or, uh, uh, um, uh, or running? Huh. We are made for walking, uh, but uh, I would choose running. It brings you faster someplace. It, it goes with, with my character together. <laughs> One for both of you, summer or, or winter? It depends where. <laughs> Uh, winter in the mountains, winter or summer in the mountains. I love the mountains, and um, but I'll be in Turkey next week where it'll be summer, summer, and I can't wait to be on the beach. So, can I have everything? Absolutely. <laughs> well, for me, it's winter uh, because it's so pure. Uh, it 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 uh, um, and everything is uh, covered. However, underneath is a lot going on, and it's the uh, new life is you know bursting and coming out. So, I love winter. <laughs> well, thanks for these great an answers. Thanks for being our guest uh, today, early in the morning. Um, and yeah, you can be happy, uh, Karina. If you look around, there are a lot of happy faces. Thanks. This is for me a first sign that you did a great job. So you don't need to survey for that. You just go around and you see happy faces. So thank you yeah, for that. Big compliments, <laughs> and yeah. Since we're wrapping up, I do have a question for you. You've, you had so many talks now, so 
what did surprise you or what did come out that you would emphasize out of the what you've well, heard? Absolutely. So many exciting it, things. it was an amazing learning process for me. I learned so much. For example, I can talk for hours about that because it was really intensive. We had um, 14 guests here actually. So, for example, I didn't know anything about uh, events at sea, at cruise ship, ships. That was an amazing talk, you know. I learned a lot from that. Then, of course, yesterday there was um, a lady doing uh, experience design. Uh, uh, she, she's doing what you explained a little bit now, but she, she went deep, deep into the, the topic, you know, so we do not know a lot about that. So how to create real experiences, yeah. Yeah? what does it mean to create experiences and so on and so on, Petra. It was amazing. It was a learning for me and that's what I like and this is what our industry is also all about, you know, yeah. and we need to have a space to, to talk about things openly. Also, some people were critical to certain things, but this is what Ljubljana Talks yeah. is, is about. So, yeah, yeah. love yeah. it. <laughs> so, uh, Karina and Ray and the whole team and everyone involved, really, thanks. It, actually, you enabled us all of it. So, thank, also from me personally, sincere thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks again. Stay tuned. We are coming back at 10 o'clock. <laughs>